If you think this is your typical smartphone, prepare to be blown away. Meet the iQ9 Pro, a flagship phone housing a 6.78 inch Super Retina AMOLED display, triple camera setup, insane 120 watt fast charging with an iconic design inspired by motorsports. But to test it, I need to find a better subject. All right, what's going on guys? Dan Watson and this. This has to be one of the coolest phones that I have ever used. And I've actually been posting some BTS from this on my Instagram channel. So definitely hang out with me on IG if you're not already. And I just got a few unreleased products as well. So some crazy awesome reviews and tutorials on the way. Appreciate you guys hitting like, subscribe. Feel free to hit me up anytime. So this is the iQ9 Pro and I can't tell you how awesome it is to just see a little bit of fresh air with the design of the phone because it is instantly recognizable and everyone that I have shown this to absolutely loves the device, loves the build of this and actually even starting with the front of the device, it manages to look great. So we actually have a curved edge leading to this large display with just a little cutout for the camera itself. And this is rocking some super high-end specs right here. So we have a 6.78 inch Super Retina AMOLED display with 517 PPI, a refresh rate between one hertz all the way to 120 hertz and HDR10 plus certification. And all of that is actually covered by Gorilla Glass Victus to protect it from scratches and cracks. Now underneath the display is probably the largest and fastest in-display fingerprint reader I've ever used to the point where I don't even think about it anymore. I just barely Barely tap and instantly it unlocks the phone. Now the back is definitely where things go all out. So you have this absolutely stunning white carbon fiber look with that iconic tricolor design. And even the camera housing just looks like a piece of jewelry with the way that this metal frame blends with this dark colored glass on it. And it's an added benefit, it actually fits flat on a table without kind of bending over or anything like that because of the way that this is designed. Now the case on this, this is the case. It actually looks absolutely identical. I love it. The case doesn't look or feel like a case when it's on the device. It just looks like a continuation of the exact same branding and the look of the device itself with that same kind of carbon fiber look and vegan leather on the back. Seriously, this is one of the best looking phones on the market right now. And if you happen to be a BMW fan, how do you not buy this? I mean, this made me want to go buy a brand new BMW M series just to match this phone. It looks so amazing. Now it does have stereo speakers on it and the sound quality from it is actually really good. And there is an IR blaster on this phone. So you can control a ton of different devices straight from the phone. This is one of those things that once you have it, it's tough to go back to a device without it. For me, the only hardware miss is that it's only rated to IP52, which is basically splash resistant and not fully IP67 waterproofing. Now powering this thing, it is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. And mine also came configured with 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. So definitely top of the line from a power perspective. And if you're gaming with this phone, it actually handles it extremely well. Now, something that's really awesome is while you're gaming, you can access this ultra game mode that lets you quickly see all of your phone info, control a bunch of your settings right on the spot. So between the power, the screen, the speakers, the gaming experience on the iQ9 Pro is great. So before we get to the cameras though, another massive feature on this phone, 120 watt 
fast charging. This can literally charge your phone from zero to 100% in like 20 minutes. And it also comes with the charger in the box, which is awesome. Even wireless charging on this thing was up to 50 watts, which is more than most flagship phones can do even while plugged in. And this is not a small battery either. This is a 4,700 milliamp hour battery. So absolutely, I had amazing battery life, all day battery life, and just insane charging speeds. All right, so now let's get into the camera itself. And the highlight, definitely going to be this main camera sensor, which is an upgraded 50 megapixel Samsung GN5 sensor with a gimbal on it. More on that in a little bit. The sensor itself is actually really large. It's one over 1.57 inches, a wide aperture f1.75, and it also has phase detection autofocus for much better continuous autofocus tracking on it. So yes, inside of this is actually a gimbal and it's pretty awesome to watch because you can literally see the gimbal moving around inside of that camera sensor. It does add a bit of stabilization to this image for sure it is helping. Remember though, this is a small gimbal so it's not gonna compensate for like major bumps or running but it did help smooth out some basic wobble that I was getting otherwise. So the ultra wide camera also pretty unique as well. So this is a 50 megapixel Samsung sensor but with a much wider field of view than we would typically see even in ultra wide cameras. It's 150 degrees with an f2.2 aperture. So think more of like that fisheye effect from it. Now if you don't want that fisheye effect, you can absolutely turn on AI distortion correction, which turns it into a more typical 120 degree wide angle camera. But keep in mind in that kind of fisheye mode, that is the native way that the camera is shooting and the quality is actually amazing when you're shooting with that. Now the wide angle camera also doubles as a macro lens. I don't use that too often personally, but it's great to have it when you need it and it worked extremely well because there's autofocus built into this camera. Now the telephoto lens is also a 16 megapixel sensor with an f2.2 aperture and a phase detection autofocus system with optical stabilization. Now the main and the wider angle cameras, both of these that are using these two large sensors had absolutely amazing quality for both photo and video. Dynamic range is great, colors were solid, noise was very well controlled on this for me. Now the telephoto lens, was really the only one that didn't blow me away from a quality perspective. And what's actually very interesting, that's a smaller one right over here, is if you go into the camera mode, unless you are in manual mode, using the two and a half zoom option is actually still using the main camera with just a digital crop on it. So if you actually wanna use this telephoto camera, you have to go into the pro mode. So maybe they noticed as I did that the quality was just not as good as the main camera by comparison. Now for video, the camera has the ability to record up to 8K at 30 frames per second and 4K up to 60 frames per second. For me, 4K 60 option was definitely the most appealing and where I recorded the most. But in 8K, the video actually looks really good. And if you're cropping or exporting in 8K, you will absolutely see the difference between 8K and 4K. Now the 4K does have some additional stabilization on it that the 8K doesn't have. So again, I don't really use 8K video on this, but it looked really good. And if you wanna be able to shoot 8K on this, you absolutely can. Now what's really nice is you have a full manual mode or pro mode and this allows you to control basically everything on the camera plus you get histograms and zebras although for whatever reason in video you can only control the main camera without restrictions all the other cameras have some form of restrictions with them in photo mode all three cameras seem to have full manual support on them. Now, there's no flat color profile for video, which I've seen in a few phones recently, so that's a little bit unfortunate for me since I'm often doing some like color grading in post, but the end results were still great. I mean, video looks absolutely stunning here. It's just that sometimes it might've looked a little bit over-processed for me than what I would prefer. But actually, one of my favorite features was the built-in photo editor, which 
had so many advanced editing options, including one of the fastest eraser tools I have ever used. But definitely there are so many features built into this gallery app that you could basically use this for all of your photo editing. So the end result for me is a phone that was one of the most powerful devices I've used, which kind of helps with all of this BMW M series branding. It is flagship specs all around with a few flagship beating features like the fast charging and IR remotes on this. And even the cameras offer solid all around performance, especially with the wide and the standard sensors with this gimbal camera and full manual control and some top end video options. And guys, seriously, once you see this phone in person, it just makes you not want to get anything else on the market because it is so uniquely stunning. And I absolutely love these BMW M motorsport style enhancements on here. And I don't even own a BMW, but let me know what you guys are thinking on this thing. I am absolutely impressed by it. Let me know if there's another device you think I should check out. I've got a ton of other stuff coming around. So please like subscribe if you haven't already. Hope you guys are doing amazing. I'll see you soon in a new video.